Hello and welcome to Springboard Media's Active Tips. Today we're going to take a look at your property browser. So I'm going to pin my browsers over here. If you don't see your browsers, you can go into View and make sure that browsers are checked. It's also Command V or Control V. So each of these icons across the top is a different browser that has a different function. Today we're going to take a look at the fifth one over the property browser. So right now you can see I have nothing selected, so I just see the information for my page. What's interesting to note though is I do see here what the size of my page is. I also see if there's a specific background and what page trend effect is in place. I can also see what tools are in place. So you can see that the revealer tool is here um, and it's set that it will automatically reveal on this page. This is also where I can change the grid for my page. And here the grid is not visible. Let me take a look at some of the things that you can see on the page. When we're clicking on the page, we can see the size, the page trend effects and tools, as well as the grid. When we click on text, the property browser is going to change. Now we have a box for identification, which is where we can add keywords if we're going to need containers. We can also see the appearance of this, which for text is about the layer it's on and its translucency. We can also see this button right here for labels. So I could add a label to this text that would pop up either as a tooltip or always on that could describe what it was or give the word in a different language if I wanted to create tooltips. When I click on an object, I now see this fill box with the colors and the outline box. These are two things I can change about shapes. So I can change the style of the outline and the width of the outline, as well as the fill. So this is where you can create the gradient shapes that you often see in flip charts. You can create different types of gradients or different types of fills. You're choosing the type of fill you're looking for and then the color. If you choose gradient and nothing happens, make sure you check the kind of gradient you're looking for. When I have an object selected, I can also create containers. And that's right down here in my property browser under containers. There are different types of containers. Right now, it's to contain nothing. If I set this up to contain anything, anything I put inside the circle will be automatically grouped to the circle and stay with it. I can also set it up to contain a specific object, one correct answer. Or I could have it set up to contain keywords, where many different answers could go into that box or circle. Another thing we can change about a shape is the restrictors. And the restrictors will allow us to decide if we want the shape to be able to move. So we could say yes, we want it to move freely. Or no, we want it to only be able to move vertically. So now the shape, no matter what I do, is only going to move up and down on the page. This is great if you want some shapes to be able to turn or rotate, but not move. You don't have to lock them. You can just create, so you can just set up their restrictors so that they can't move or they can only move vertically or horizontally. You can also specify a specific path that they need to move along. This button right here will allow my shape to rotate. So if I choose that this object cannot move at all, but can rotate when I click on it, it will just be rotating. This is one way that you can create a spinner, although it doesn't work quite as well for a group of objects as it does just for one object. Sometimes you run into issues where only parts of it are spinning. Another good way to do it would be to create the object and to then take a screenshot of it with the camera tool. You can also change the properties of images. However, images have very similar properties that you'd see with text. You can give labels to them to have tooltips come up or create keywords. The only other thing you can do with images is to select a transparent color. So if you ever have an image where the background has a color to it that you would rather not have there, you can actually make that color transparent. Let me show you how you do this by actually filling my color, by actually filling my page with a different color. 
Let's do this light yellow. Now if I can find an image and I bring it into the background, I can see that it has all this white here. This image has already been made transparent and it doesn't have that weight around it. So how did I do this? In the property browser, I'm going to go down to miscellaneous and I'm going to click transparent and make sure it's on true. And then it says transparent color. I could choose white or I could also use this color picker to select the exact color I'd like to make transparent. This can make your flip charts if you're using colored background a lot more professional looking where you won't have the white outline around each image. When I bring up the next page, I can see that the tools are still here and I can change that in my property browser as well. Under tools, if I click on it as before and then change this to tools off, now that revealer isn't there anymore. Thank you so much for watching today's active tip. Check out our website for more information about our professional development. We're also offering summer boot camps for teachers.